Inhale slowly. And exhale. Try to be in the spot between both inhalations and exhalations. Can you dissolve yourself in the pause? Gently with a few blinks, open your eyes. Thank you so very, so very much, folks. <laughs> so um, we had a quick glimpse of what pranayama was. We, was we were focusing on inhalation and we were focusing on exhalations too. But don't you think the third one, which made us focus between the inhalation and exhalation, made us more calm, you know? made us more agitated, made us more cool, calm, and disposed rather than agitated. So this is the first lesson that we have to take. While you are doing off yoga, while you are doing yoga off the mat, or you are trying to paint something, you are trying to do your desk job at office, what you got to do? Take, you know, after three, four hours of your job, take five moments, just five seconds, you know, and then try to be in the spot between inhalation and exhalation. That is breathing and right breathing, okay? The second one, through such breath, what do you got to know? You try to feel. Feel is the second word, second phase. What do you feel? Feeling the stressors and accepting them as you know that you will grow through all these pains, painful situations. Now, while you do any hobby or while you are into dancing, okay, and then you focus more on breath, it is not usually through Zumba dance and Arabic dance you get to focus on the breath because it is always rapidity in the oxygen. But things like um, uh, the Russian dance, you know, one which glide, one that has a gliding movements like ballet or so, you know, while you do such dances, you focus more, you concentrate more, and you relax more. Okay? You feel that peace that comes from the actions, the action which generated the peace move towards yourself. So you try to feel. For example, in asana, like you are, you know, trying a hard posture, you are trying an arm balance, okay, you're taking the support of the wall and trying to do an arm balance, okay, and then instructor is constantly trying to tell you, look, the body weight is there, definitely there, but you try to bring them on your palms, arms, and your elbows, make them firm, make them fix it so that your reach towards the wall would be easy and you'll be able to hold your posture one in a better manner, in a stability, stable manner. Now, while you do that, if you focus more on what you're doing, the posture stability will not occur. What you got to do, you have to focus more on your breath and the displacement of body weight, okay? When you do that, your arms, arms force, you know, the, the weight distributed over to your arm would be, be would be better, right? So while you <clears throat> develop the breath awareness, you feel more. And that's what yoga also, you know, provides a lesson of that while you are put into any situation, any stressful situation, for example, uh, you get to know that you are sensibly hurt by a person, emotionally hurt by a person. He had, uh, you know, done a terrible wrong thing towards you or for you. Then what do you get? What do you, how do you react? 
you react sensibly you react through your emotions but here yoga says okay now try to take the lesson from the mat breathe first stay in the pause between inhalation and exhalation and then you know how to respond to the person if you definitely find any genuinity in his reason you will pay heed to if at all you are going to react to the situation you will never find the genuinity of the reason also right you will never find to get the truth of the person to so he the second lesson that mat and off the mat gives you is feeling the stressors breathe and feel the stressors uh i was a, a teacher from the beginning i was a yoga teacher <coughs> turned lecturer turned assistant professor now i am going to be an associate professor soon so it is not the years of training that made me assistant professor or associate professor or like from a lecturer to assistant professor i should say all those terrible mistakes that i did through my profession which made me understand okay lalita this is not the generation which you were talking to like 5 years ago <laughs> you have to change yourself change your mindset so now i know how to modify myself transform myself and put the same you know give the same decoction vedantic decoction to a person who is you know ultra modern you know who belongs to a post modern civilization right so this is the kind of transformation that you get through yoga on the mat and off the mat, off the mat. <laughs> if if you try to breathe and feel those stressors stressors are not those stressors which asana gives you stressors are those stressors which life throws at you okay so the second is done here i would want you know i would love to talk about uh, shri krishna in bhagavad gita shri krishna is again a role model he is praised as lord over here and he was you know in this world before 5000 7000 years ago and he was the propounder of bhagavad gita he he was the message giver to arjuna whom i was telling you the warrior of the warrior you know who was the greatest uh, kshatriya the soldier you know and uh, on the conversation between arjuna and krishna it was such a situation where arjuna had to fight against his own kinsmen his own relatives you know he had to kill his own grandfather <laughs> because his grandfather was you know taking the uh, place of those army men or or the troop of soldiers who who were non righteous to the society okay who were not up to the mark to be as administrators so krishna says bring in righteousness to life bring in righteousness to society goodness to society by killing those who are you know who are in the part of injustice so that's how the conversation was made and it is a well known conversation everywhere you can see bhagavad gita's translations you know in in russian in <coughs> hindi in german you know everywhere you can see so bhagavad gita it's a great scripture on yoga and the philosophy is mostly on vedanta advaita vedanta which means we are all one though we seem to be different you know anna maria is you know is different from silvia silvia is different from carolina carolina has a long hair you know silvia has a short hair so we seems to we seem to be different we seem to have different color creed and belong to different nations but there is solidarity there is a singularity that singularity is that we exist that consciousness so that is about vedanta and yoga is also 
one such philosophy which adapts the philosophy of vedanta so here bhagavad gita krishna says you know how to emote he gives a beautiful analogy of a tortoise have you ever seen a tortoise <laughs> okay so when the tortoise is moving you know when someone comes before the tortoise what will happen it will retract his head inside it will retract all its limbs inside thinking that the, the person you know which he is encountering which it is encountering is some you know enemy or so so it knows how to retract his limbs inside that's how a tortoise behaves so he says krishna says यदा संहरते चायम कूर्मोंगानी व सर्वशः इंद्रियानिंद्रियार्थेव्यः तस्य प्रज्ञा प्रतिष्ठिता ही सेस वाइज पर्सन इज सच हु नोस हाउ टू रिट्रैक्ट हिज इमोशंस एट सच प्लेसेस वेयर ही हैज टू रिट्रैक्ट एंड हु नोस हाउ टू यू नो रिलीज दोस इमोशंस वेयर इट हैज टू बी रिलीज्ड it it is definitely the wisdom that he is talking about because um we do not apply wisdom while we you know take take the respect of emotions it is always logical analysis judgment you know judging uh, judging some persons or his activity we use logic we use intellect but while you know in the gamut of emotions we never use intellect <laughs> it is always the heart it is always the mind that overrules right but he says no no you have to incorporate wisdom in the emotions too hence there is a surge of you know there is importance now not given to iq but to the eq emotional quotient why is it so when you know when is the right place to release your emotion there is the right place to exhibit your emotion then you you are said to be the most matured personality don't you feel so he says emotions have to be felt when needed and when not needed these emotions have to be completely retracted inside like a tortoise and established in the divine wisdom he says no that's the stability what yoga is teaching you on the mat and that you have to take off the mat too so how do you apply this in your hobby if you are a orator okay you love talking and interacting with people making speeches and you know you are uh, your hobby is you know rating and what do you do you try to uh, make some notes and then you try to deliver you try to demonstrate your lecture sometimes the lecture goes good the sometimes it doesn't reach well so what happens when it doesn't reach well you get so sensitive you get you feel so bad about it why isn't going well why didn't people understand what i was saying why didn't people get that connect what went wrong you feel so bad about it you feel that conflict frustration inside but krishna says no 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 establish your emotions in divine wisdom okay what does the divine wisdom say accept however it is however the life goes accept it when you know that if there is you know 100 percentage of something there is 50 percentage of something too okay the range can differ it's normal right it is normal when you try to understand that life lesson that everything is normal and not taking things too seriously into heart and then emoting unnecessarily reacting to stimulus unnecessarily is all false is all fake you know is all those things which we try to impose saying that we were we were wonderfully good but things went wrong <laughs> blaming other people blaming other situations 
you know that's how we do but don't don't, don't we know that these are all false we definitely knew it but still we do so krishna says that is you know foolishness he says to to emote and to not emote is in your hands and that should be dependent upon your wisdom he says like the tortoise okay the third one the third principle is watching you watch you watch the minute changes you know what happens when you are in shashank asana when you are bending yourself completely down to a child pose what happens the blood circulation is too quick towards heart too quick quick towards your head too quick towards your eyes you know but still you your instructor says stay there you know put yourself into stability there try to watch your breath and then you try to watch okay my heart is pumping oh my god it is pumping more than normal it is pumping 140 beats now <laughs> so you try to watch and then while you watch to an to your own amazement you try to handle things better okay the heart will pound at 140 beats per minute even when you are in panic attack but at that point of time you are scared you feel that panic but that same panic is not happening while you are in child pose why is it so why is it so because of the watch <laughs> what does this watch mean the witness attitude we call in sanskrit as sakshi bhava by being a witness you understand you are not this body you definitely could understand that intellect is murmuring the mind is you know yapping it's chit chat you know you definitely could understand there is someone who is recognizing the body changes who is listening to the intellect's chit chat the mind's yapping i am someone different from my body from my emotions from my mental turmoils from my intellectual decisions so this is that witness attitude and krishna says when you are in witness attitude you are at peace nimitta matram bhavasavya sachin he says nimitta means instrument he says hey arjuna you become an instrument of action the action is already done and you are just an instrument which is doing um you know um uh, this is a zoom conversation that is happening right satsang lalita over here in india is delivering the satsang and all of you from romania and different parts of the world are listening to okay you know you know just make a wild imagination of it zoom starts to proclaim that this satsang went well because of me <laughs> if we personate personify zoom and then zoom is trying to claim rights from rights from me franchise from me he says that delivering of lecture of yours is because of me and then you have to pay for me zoom is just an instrument through which this lecture is the medium through which the lecture is demonstrated right krishna says you are also just like that zoom just like that medium why don't you do your actions being an instrument of mine you know the lord is there he is doing all good things to people he is also doing all bad things to people for those karmic accounts he is doing his job well right and what are we doing we are trying to claim 
we are trying to acknowledge our own actions which is wrong he says when we try to do that you become over ambitious today right today a few hours ago i came to know that a person died out of heart attack i said he was hardly 47 years old and he was so fit he was doing all gymming he was working out well what happened to him the woman said he was over ambitious he started a retreat kind of thing you know where he built up some you know yoga village or sort resort type in a in a in a village and people don't you know come to that village to enjoy that resort it seems because of the pandemic situation and he was so over ambitious he had all the you know he didn't have to incur so so many losses not because of financial loss he went out he broke down it is because that he had nothing to do in his life other than that and he was over ambitious and then he had a heart attack it seems it was so painful when i heard that so that is what happens when we constantly connect ourselves to our actions and its fruition krishna says if you want peace what do you have to do don't acknowledge don't claim the benefits benefit will definitely come to you but if you start to claim if you start to you know have that hankering upon those fruition of your actions what will happen you will start developing anxiety you will become yourself a cardiovascular disorder <laughs> disorder by patient right so that's what he says he says maintain that witness attitude and be an instrument in the hands of lord i remembered a scripture called vyadha gita vyadha means butcher <laughs> the gita of the butcher it says the scripture itself says how come a butcher who is so evil who is so cruel and you know not a speck of kindness and love and unconditional affection what bhakti yoga teaches what yoga and vedanta propitiates he a butcher can deliver gita the scripture is there saying butcher's gita why is it so everyone has his own profession but when you don't attach yourself to the fruits of the profession to the fruits of the action you become a yogi you definitely not you know not doing you're not definitely doing yoga asana pranayama meditation on the mat you are you are butchering you know <laughs> you're killing goats you're killing cats uh, sorry cows you know taking the rip the leather off rip the flesh off you know selling the flesh to people although you're doing such actions heinous action you're not connecting yourself to the action you're not connecting yourself to the fruit of action and you remain an instrument of an action that is done by the lord himself then the butcher is delivering gita <laughs> he's the greatest yogi he is he is delivering all sermons you know there are sacred mantras in in vyada gita where you know people take quotes upon you know, such a great yogi he was so that is practicing yoga of the mat detaching yourself from the fruits of action coming back to the uh, theme of today i will while practicing any hobby okay i will uh, interrupt you here uh, so but Uh, from the example of that butcher, we can take this wrong as well. No, uh, I can become a terrorist and kill people and not attached to them. Not attached. But terrorist do get money for that. <laughs> But do claim the do claim their uh, actions as you know. from the terrorist organization this is not done by that terrorist organization but by me but by us you know they claim they claim so when you do any action for that matter vyadagita was an extreme example but 
you you can you can see how vedanta you know takes people with open arms you might belong to any kind of profession you might you know take any kind of action just that you don't attach yourself from that action makes you a yogi makes you a vedantic scholar makes you a, a saint by yourself all by yourself though being a butcher so terrorism does not occur because terrorism actually you know calls the press media and says this is done by us <laughs> so when that declaration is done it means you are definitely giving acknowledgement to the action so uh, i hope i cleared that manish to you yes it was clear yeah yeah so breathe feel and watch the fourth one is alone what do you allow while you are on mat what happens you allow the pain to happen i i last week when manish was making people doing setu bandhasana i was amazed oh he is making people doing setu bandhasana for seconds together for minutes together but still people are on so what is that turmoil that that happens in the mind while you are in setu bandhasana holding your back and straightening that leg up inverting your blood circulation completely down what kind of mental interactions happen only interaction happens that when will money bring me back down <laughs> okay when i am going to say that i am relieved of this state bandhasana but between those two thoughts of getting relieved of and then staying in that posture which one wins get him hold to the bolt let let him not say the instruction let him be let me be in the posture let me be in the posture you try to allow the pains to happen right you try to allow that back stretch you know extension to happen and you know very well that the extension of back if i am going to allow if i am going to you know make that happen for a little more period of time it is not going to harm me it is going to enhance my agility it is enhance it is going to enhance my ability to flex more to extend more it is going to enhance my endurance and stamina you know that very well and hence willfully you are allowing yourself to stay in that posture right willfully you are taking all the pains inside is it a, is it a, a relaxing posture <laughs> is it shavasana no it is definitely not shavasana you feel pains there but you allow it willfully with determination and the same thing that you have to practice off the mat come what may in life you know even you you are you are, you had a great fight with your consort you know even if you have a you know um bastard like a boss you know who 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 yells at you even when things go utterly wrong at your profession at your you know um uh, personal life you know the affairs of the personal life what do you have to do let me allow the pain let me grow through this pain let me willfully accept the pain that this is going to enhance my ability to flex i will know how to transform this will help me in you know in in increasing the agility in increasing my stamina my sturdiness my tough mindedness that is allowing allowing the pain to arise and pass each and every moment of sukha and dukha of misery and happiness will always arise and will always pass corona will arise corona will pass no corona mutant will arise corona mutant will also pass you know so that you knew 
Hence, you have to allow things to happen. No, I will not allow. Let me fight against it. Let me do. Let me you know swim against the currents. <laughs> If you're going to do that, who who is going to be the greatest fool of the universe? You yourself. Because you're not going to swim against the greatest tides, the greatest currents of the ocean, but also you're going to fight against. fight against nature itself look life is going to unfold as it as it had destined it to be life is predestined do you ever believe life is predestined i i totally believe that life is predestined you know there is this agastya jyotisha we call it as there is this rishi called agastya who had you know predicted Uh, uh every person's life and he had inscribed it in the palm leaves and it is still available you know down south in the um uh, in the nation in our nation india called tamil nadu where i belong you know you know come whatever your name is you know you have to go to that place and then say your name he will bring 15 20 leaflets of palm leaves saying that if your father's name is this then you say no this is this is not my father's name is your father's name is this he will ask then so then you he will find out your father's name's leaflet along with your name and then try to predict all the entire life of yours so there are certain permutations and combination this great mathematician agastya rishi had made and had predicted exactly how your life can go you know that it seems miraculous but when you once when you find the place you will be you will you know experience the magic so life is predestined what can be done i can be just an instrument allowing the life to unfold however it can you know happen whatever can happen in my life i'll just allow it to unfold valmiki ramayana it reminds me valmiki ramayana statement where rama you know the superhero which i was mentioning in the prelude he says sarve kshayanta nichayaha patananta samutrayaha samyoga viprayoganta maranantam tu di jeevitam so he says sarve khayanta nichayaha whatever that is going to rise will fall <laughs> patananta samutrayaha samyoga viprayoganta whatever that is going to join together will disintegrate now you are into a one set of community definitely after a few years you are going to leave away from that unit no <laughs> previously you were with your parents now you are away from your parents <laughs> now you are with your uh, with your friends you are going to move out from those friends too right so those who come together will definitely leave apart patananta samutraya whatever that you you know is going to whatever you are going to aggregate things in your life if you are thinking that i'm going to earn this earn this earn this all those earnings will end in spending he says <laughs> you're going to spend spending is the end of all earning maranantam tu jeevitam life ends with death nothing in this life is certain like death at this certain <laughs> he says so when you know that this is going to be the end then why do you have to worry about it is not narcissistic it is not a negative approach but trying to find the bright side of life you know trying to enjoy life with peace contentment than struggling and swimming against and fighting against the nature you know is is more wiser that's what rama says 
So allowing things to happen, allowing life to unfold. And the fifth one, the fifth anga, the last anga is relax from within. Unless until you do not put the ambition, everyone has ambitions in life. You know, right from the third, three year old till 70 year old, everyone has goals in life. You know? Whenever I ask, what is the goal of your life? People say, I'm going to be a chartered accountant. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be a great you know, patron or vice chancellor of a university. I'm going to be a great painter, an artist, a dancer. People always connect their profession and the growth of the profession as their ambition, which is very piteous. <laughs> I should say, peace should be the ambition of everyone's life. Whatever you are, you are. If you are self-contented, you know, if you are peaceful, you will definitely have growth in personal and professional life. But if you are going to hanker over the growth and development of life, you'll never be at peace. And without peace, you cannot, you know, achieve those objectives too. So essentially, peace, relaxation should be the most important facet of your life. Taitri Upanishad say, says, the mantra itself is so beautiful, it will bring you to peace, you know. <laughs> Anando Brahme Tivya Janat Ananda Deva Kalvi Mani Bhutani Jayante Anande Najatani Jeevanti Anandam Prayantya Bisam Vishanti Tad Vigyaya that's the peace that resonates. Anando Brahme Devya Janath. Peace is your existence. After obtaining, after understanding, after realizing that knowledge, that from peace is where everyone has got originated from. It is into peace where we are going to completely go into and merge with. It is with this peace that we are all maintained. You know, when you understand that, you get established in that cosmic space. You get established yourself in that peace itself, Upanishad says. So, <laughs> hobbies can also be yoga. When you identify that five angas of yours, breathe, be aware, watchful attitude, take things as the life comes, relax deeply. I'll end the session with a small closing prayer and then we'll move for the further discussion because my time is over. I'll end with the same chant on Rama where we'll pray that righteousness and peace should preside all over the world and whoever who believes that righteousness and peace has to preside over should get progress in their life shall get progress in their professional, personal and spiritual lives. Okay. Ramo, Ramo, Ramayiti Prajanama Vahan Gataha Rama Bhutam Jagadabhu Rami Rajam Prashasati Amogham Balavir Yam Te Amoghaste Paragramaha Amoghaste Bavishyanti 
ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಂತಶ್ಚರಾ ಅಮೋಘಂ ದರ್ಶನ ನ ಚ ಮೋಘಸ್ತವಸ್ತವ ಅಮೋಘಾಸ್ತಿ ಭವಿಷ್ಯಂತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ Thank you folks for patient listening. Is there any discussion over? Then we'll open. So we have 10 more minutes. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask her. And it's really appreciated if you ask any questions. It is greatly appreciated even if you don't also. <laughs> don't worry, take life as it comes. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, Arulia. And this is somehow related to our both sessions. So in the first session, you gave the example of Arjun, who was um, counseled by Lord Krishna to fight against his own kinsmen. Yeah? So this would be follow the warrior's path. Okay. And now we talked briefly about the butcher's jitta when Manish was asking you, but what about the terrorists who would say I slaughter other people and I'm not attached to the outcome of my actions. My question is, um, hmm, how do we find the red, the right line in our lives to make the decisions between what is wrong and what is right? Because at some point I, I can... bring myself you are asking like arjuna himself <laughs> you know arjuna also asked the same question to krishna mm. how do i find that this is right and wrong mm. krishna mm. you know i do understand to stay in the stability or to stay in the path of yoga i have to do right and doing right with detachment i understand that perfect but how do i know this is right and wrong and so he asked yes, exactly yeah. yeah the same question krishna says hridesha arjuna tishtati he says it is there in your heart arjuna <laughs> i am there in your heart guiding mm mm-hmm. look um, i'll give you a small example that we are all built with this inner mechanism saying that which deeply guides us that this is right and this is wrong at all frame of time you know at all frame of time once when i went to a cinema theater for you know to watch a movie i saw a small young lad who was hardly one and a half years he just learned to walk okay <laughs> you know it was a beautiful picture but the picture had you know the 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 movie had everything all those masala hits all those things which a normal movie has okay the hero you know goes and protects his wife or the girlfriend from the villain you know the villain you know abducts the girl you know took her takes her and bring keeps her into his house and then the hero goes and it saves her protects her back okay so that was the normal picture the normal movie but this young lad one and a half year old when he saw him he came out you know and then he tried to imbibe those actions what how a hero in the poster was making you know he was he was like this <laughs> making the faces of the hero and he was trying to punch him punch the villain's face in the poster it was a normal action but it made me amazed a small young lad of hardly 15 18 months old could know that treating a woman bad is wrong you know 
or staying with the purity of celibacy with one girl is right how does this boy comes to know this we call as samskaras the impressions which we have got through previous life that this is right and this is wrong we have this discriminating power mechanism you know this this software inside which has this discerning ability and which keeps us in the right track of action so krishna here says it is there within you now your question arelia how do i get to know how do i get to realize that i'm doing right or wrong only when only when you are peace when you are at peace you will know that you are right or you are wrong remember people used to say when you are deathbed when you are at deathbed you will come to realize you are all wrong at these actions you know it comes as a you no know, rewind mode the entire love, life comes as a rewind mode saying that, oh you were wrong to this lady you were have you have been over protective to this this guy you have been you know you have wronged this guy this this thing happens when you are at death bed why why because this dawns that knowledge dawns that life is very temporal and you are at peace completely now i have to leave as no responsibilities yet though i have you know though i have but i will not be able to do so that kind of peace mental peace will deliver you will keep you in the right track this we call as vigyana maya kosha aurelia vigyana maya kosha is the fourth state of consciousness which everyone has within and this is nothing but the structure of intellect this is not in brain <laughs> this is not in brain definitely intellect is a capability of brain you can say but it is definitely there within which is intangible good. i hope i answered your question yes it was good it was good the rest i have to do <laughs> but maybe we can keep it for next time what i understood from your um, uh uh answer to aurelia it was that we know inside how do we know that we know the truth because maybe my your example was obvious somebody kidnapping a young girl that is bad of course but in day to day life the the bad bad parts of life are more subtle than that so it's not obvious that Right somebody Simona. threatening to kill somebody so the right most Simona. subtle um, example you don't have to answer now maybe we can have it for a, another session not now but the yeah but i'll try to put in a nutshell that um, if you want to understand a greater picture you have to ride an aeroplane <laughs> you know when you are at greater heights then you see oh this person was in in that particular space but he was you know lying that he was with her <laughs> so while you, while you are riding an aeroplane while you are in an aeroplane you get to a great you get to have a great picture so the same yoga is saying you just have to uplift the mental plane you know get yourself into a greater height and understand the greater picture how do you do that get into other shoes and understand the truth Simona is standing here and understanding the perspective of Simona and realizing this person is right this person is wrong but when we try to slip in to their shoes you know to both of their shoes and understand their situations then we get to know the right picture there was one other question in the chat hi in the middle of rising conflict how do you maintain peace and focus serenella thank you serenella for the question it is very difficult serenella when you are in deep conflicts 
you are frustrated yourself you are you know amidst all those confusions you know all those events which could make you you know incapable of making any decision it is definitely not easy to make peace and focus it, it is definitely not easy but five angas breathe feel hello you know watchful attitude be a witness attitude and relax can definitely you know take you away from this state to a state of stability to a state of in you know in from a state of insanity to sanity then you will be able to take the right decision then you will be able to acquire that peace um and the anchor or the focus have to be on what on breathing on breathing you can start between... you can start from breath you can start from breath and not necessarily breath um like i i love to uh, you know uh play a stringed instrument called veena have you ever heard of veena yeah no no <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful instrument which we used you know we, which we all used to play in you know in the southern parts of our nation it it gives a kind of peace that resonance itself gives a kind of peace so when you are completely immersed in into an action not even bothered about the outcome of action just enjoy that very moment of playing veena you definitely need not to pay focus over the breath you are in the state of yoga there you definitely not do vrikshasana you know tree pose and crocodile pose and what not but you are in the state of yoga i do not know what your profession is serenella if you are a lawyer okay i am a doctor a, sorry sorry i am i'm a radiologist i am a doctor you are a doctor so while giving consultation with a patient detaching yourself from the outcome that my patient is going to get well and better only with my consultation mm -hmm. just enjoying that you are making him move away from illness to wellness from i to we i call this as i to we <laughs> you know detaching the ego yeah and get into the we form okay so when you enjoy his journey from illness to wellness that consultation itself is yoga serenella i think serenella lost her internet connectivity <laughs> she's frozen <laughs> she's frozen by the fact that i have told her the vedantic tip <laughs> okay i have another question if we still have a little bit of time thank you thank you thank you serenella yeah roxy you look beautiful in that small little tiara thank you <laughs> it's very practical to hold my hair <laughs> <laughs> um i was thinking about something you said uh in the middle part of um the discussion where you you should hold back your um feelings mostly negative and um express them in the right moment maybe mm, right. it was something about this and right. i i was thinking because i I don't know sometimes how to hold back my um negative feelings for example with uh, related to the previous top topic where there's a conflict and uh, maybe two persons are arguing and uh, you know all the energy from them also come to me <laughs> and I can feel their anger and the frustration and all of the things so how can I Uh, hold back maybe i'm in the one in the conflict and i don't know how to hold back those feelings do you have any recommendations because i don't want to respond to them you know with um anger or you know i'll, being... I'll give you a small example once again here <laughs> yeah. okay so if your boss yells at you saying that you you have been a donkey 
you knew nothing about your birth okay you he starts to yell at you you know and argues with you and then what happens you start to react to him saying that how am i possibly a donkey i did all the all the pieces of work so systematically look this was the result this was the result that was the result and you also start to yell at him right this is how everybody reacts swami subodhananda says when you start to respond anyone saying that you are a donkey then it totally means that you have taken to the fact that you are yourself a donkey <laughs> so what do you got to do i am not a donkey if at all i would have been a donkey whatever he said is applicable to me <laughs> so i am not a donkey whatever he is saying is rubbish so let me disconnect these things this is not reacting this is responding and this response is what krishna is asking you to do to retract all your emotions when it is not when it is not ready you know to be expressed or to be exhibited at such a person like a person who is calling you a donkey <laughs> there's no point in arguing with them right we used to say that you are standing in a gutter okay and if someone is throwing you know that toxic waste from the gutter at you uh, you definitely not have to you know go into the gutter and start fighting with him it is essentially making you dirty so why do you have to you know spoil yourself for his for your body and your clothes by by entering into that gutter get away yourself you know that disconnect is what he is calling you know uh, krishna says dukkha sayoga vyogam yoga he says yoga is the disconnect with the sorrow <laughs> if you have any sorrow if you have any misery if you have the ability to disconnect yourself from that sorrow from that miserable situation that is yoga he says so again it is yoga practicing of the mat right while you are at office your boss is yelling at you and then you are you are practicing that disconnect there even while you are doing your normal work professional work you are disconnecting and you are doing yoga there same with the example of roxy you know when two people are arguing if you think that you are you you have the ability to relax them to pacify them you you should definitely be of your help right you have to go and help them and then relax them pacify them cool them down but if you think roxy you're going to get influenced by their negative afflictions negative emotions you are not ready there roxy get out of it <laughs> I have another question following uh, this uh, answer what if the other person is right let's for example say that i did a bad job without knowing i did my best for sure in my mind i'm sure for the best but for example i'm a 12 year old child and i don't know better than that right. but in my mind i am the best i am until this moment but i don't maybe tomorrow i will be better than today what right. if the other person is right and i say no i will disconnect myself from this mona you will learn you will grow only by disconnecting when you disconnect yourself then you know that i have done something terribly wrong when you disconnect yourself then you understand the boss who is yelling at you saying that you are a donkey is wrong only you know uh, i'll give you another example a friend comes to you you know she is crying because she she gotten through a, some relationship turmoil she broke up with the relationship and she comes weeping at you you know and then you try to pacify her relax her simona don't you think you'll be able to give her the best suggestions yes because you are your friend you know you are her friend 
and you will be out of this relationship you definitely is not or not influenced by her relationship turmoil you become the third party there now you will understand that the problem is with your friend or with your with her boyfriend because you are staying outside the trouble the person who is inside the trouble will never understand that it is his mistake or anyone else's when you disconnect yourself from the situation you know become a third party out of that situation then he will have the perceiving ability right perceiving ability that i was wrong no 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 i was wrong no he he was wrong that disconnect that detachment is the magic word as the chat someone in the chat had mentioned it is a magic word <laughs> you said the magic word disconnect from the situations so yes disconnect is the magic word when you disconnect yourself from the situation from the affair from people from objects then you do understand who you really are sanskrita in sanskrita we call it as asanga non attachment okay most of the time we end up in doing wrong actions and wrong decisions only because of our egoistic influences and ego comes up ego surges up only with attachment am i right simona <laughs> it was very clear yeah thank you thank you simona thank you so i think uh, in a family you have to search connection um yes but uh, it is a, a bitter truth that in a family you should stay connected and disconnected to being a mother is you know is a hard task it's a great uh, job hell amount of job and then taking care of kids growing and then pulling them to the right path is again a himalayan task but mother often you know goes wrong because she is completely attached to her kids she doesn't see the kids right and wrong she takes all her wrong because of her love you know because of her love she accepts all his wrongs all the kids wrongs as right but it sounds so good it sounds musical but it will never you know uh, there is no purpose in it so there being a mother you should understand that you have to connect with your family and disconnect too for the right care of kids growing up yeah yeah being mother it's hard but yet i being a mother i can tell you that i i have detached myself <laughs> i can make this bold statement and i have detached myself my from my kids there are there were certain things that had happened in my life with my younger kid and all those things through which i learned the lesson that without detachment i cannot take care of this child he was a special kind of child so only through detachment everything could happen so there in the story in we'll we'll take the session if at all you have any other question or you can put these questions to manish i can stay in touch with whatsapp and then you i can deliver the um answers is one more chat coming up another suggestion for related topic in future sessions could be ego and letting go of it okay there are there are many suggestions here <laughs> manish one is patience i will take care of you another is ego so you 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 better let me know on what i have to talk on <laughs> i will take care of this <laughs> okay manish thank you so very much for your time thank you so very much for your patience i should say and uh, you have been great listeners great shrota thank you thank you very much thank you so have thank a nice day thank you so much thank you so much thank you, thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> Thank you very much. It was beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Have Thank you, day. Manish. Thank you for making it happening. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Manish. Goodbye.